Did this professor just reveal that going to an Ivy League does not matter when it comes to being the CEO of a Fortune 500 company? David, this has Asian parents going crazy right now, but let's talk about what he really found out. Yeah, this is going viral on the internet right now. Obviously, some people agree with David King. Some people disagree with him. Some people are in the middle. Long story short, Andrew, he was a professor at the business school of Dartmouth, which is an Ivy League school, and he basically said he studied it over 20 years, and the CEOs of Fortune 500 companies were rarely from Ivy League undergraduate educations. So his conclusion was that it doesn't matter that much. And the uh, reason that he wanted to say it, because he wanted to get people off the idea that you had to go to an Ivy League undergraduate school to live a successful corporate life. That was his whole point. All right, here are some findings. 12% uh, of Fortune 100 CEOs obtained their undergraduate degrees from the Ivy League institution. So only 12% went. And then only 10% of them hold an Ivy League MBA. Right. Um, he also said that in America is a country that has a massive economy. And many of these companies in the top 500 are not white shoe law firms. They're pharmaceutical, they're manufacturing, et cetera. There's a lot more stuff like pharma, construction, more blue collar industries where an Ivy League graduate uh, education would not necessarily prepare you to be fluid or have fluency in that particular world. Right, I think when people think about Ivy, uh, Fortune 500 companies initially, they're only thinking about Apple, Tesla, Facebook, JP Morgan, these big banks, RVC in finance, it does help to go to an Ivy League school. You're I would talking say. about the normie person, Andrew, is aware of the brands in the Fortune 100 or Fortune 500 that they use on a daily basis. David, I just want to know if this is going to make Asian parents get off their kids' backs, all right? Like, you know, now. well, now that you tell me that the Ivy League degree doesn't matter, then what matters? How do I teach my kid? I just know how to push them harder and harder. Of course, Andrew, a lot of people agreed with David King, but a lot of smart people actually really disagreed with him and accused him of juking the stats. So make sure you like this video and possibly share this with some Asian parents who are Ivy League obsessed. Andrew, this even goes to the whole affirmative action thing with uh, John Wang and everything. Mm. There, there's a lot of ramifications for the Asian American community. Anyway, let's get... Um, into some of the stats, Andrew. It is true of the top Fortune 10 companies in 2019, Andrew, only Jeff Bezos was uh, went to Ivy League because he went, he went to Princeton. Mm. So of the top 10 companies in America, Andrew, only one went to an Ivy League school. But and we do find out, right, that a lot of successful people have exposure to the Ivy League, whether they went there and dropped out or they went there for un oh, uh, graduate school or something like that. David a King... He's surprisingly white. He's not Korean. Uh, there are some holes in your theory, but, it, you know, you make some solid points. Somebody said, wait, are we talking about bachelor's or master's degree here? Because definitely the MBA you go to definitely matters. And by the way, a lot of CEOs went to top-ranked MBAs, whether they were Ivy League or not. Yeah, I think the MBA program, which is a master's of business administration, I believe, or association, yeah. I think it matters a lot because that's, that's what business is for. That's networking. You know, but there are other industries, like you said, manufacturing or military stuff that does not require Ivy League school. And there's also, by the way, one more point, there's a lot of amazing schools out there that are not cons not technically Ivy Leagues. Stanford is not an Ivy League. MIT I is not Ivy League. Caltech is not Ivy League. Because Ivy Leagues are just a certain group of schools out on the East Coast. Yeah, University of Michigan is not an Ivy League. A lot of people who get up really high in companies come from that school as well. Somebody said, so wait, you're saying only 12% of Fortune CEOs, Fortune 100 CEOs went to Ivy League schools. But since Ivy League schools only make up 0.4 of 1% of colleges, that's still a 25X overrepresentation. Yes, I mean, we're just talking about how like people from the best schools still end up in high positions. Yeah, somebody said if you account for the Fortune 500 companies that are American companies that would not consider a foreign CEO, the amount of exposure uh, actually jumps to 45%. So mm. a lot of people were like, ah, ah, David Kang, quit trying to make it seem like it doesn't matter. And somebody also said, a lot of American CEOs have actually been in the military as well, particularly in fields that heavily interface with the military or logistics such as NASA or FedEx. Chemical companies, big pharma, totally mm. makes sense. Uh, Andrew, a lot actually go to West Point, which is a military academy. Right, but is not technically an Ivy League. So obviously when you're specifically talking about Ivy Leagues, that is a very specific group of like 
What, eight, eight schools. Eight schools, yeah, that's it. Somebody said, Asian parents just want their kid to go to Ivy League for the clout, man. They don't even care what they do with their life as long as they went to Harvard because it means the parents did a 10 out of 10 job because everybody knows your life after 25 years old is pretty much up to you. So who cares what you do after 25? It's about the parents saying, me, me, me. I did the best job. I raised the 10 out of 10 kid. Do you think this is true? Do you really think that parents... I do think that parents earnestly believe that it is the best path for their child to be successful, or it's more about the parents getting that like award for themselves. I think the upper middle class parents that want to raise a brainiac are just concerned with another award on the wall. But if the dad is like <clears throat> an Asian billionaire CEO, he might see more of the networking long-term uh, ramifications or good consequences. If Dad is an Asian billionaire. How many are the, how many? Hey, you'd be surprised at the Ivy Leagues, man. Somebody said in my old job, there was a guy in my department who nobody really thought much of, but he would always talk about being an Ivy League grad and everybody would laugh at him saying, yeah, that didn't do you too much good. Yeah. Well, it also matters what you do with it, man. I think it really comes down to your drive at the end of the day, considering that most people who go to any de decent school generally has like you know, maybe like the brain power isn't that different, but it's a lot about your drive. It's a lot about your focus. It's a lot about what you want to do. It's even a lot about, you know, your abilities, how people perceive you and your ability to network and smooth or, you know, get to things. Um, Andrew, we happen to know a lot of people who went to Yale and Harvard who didn't become super rich, right? Yeah. They went into like NGO, nonprofit work. They just became like a tutor. None mm. of them are really poor for sure. And they do have the networks to utilize, but some of them just become like philosophers or like authors or whatever. Yeah, I think, and those are Asian people too. And I, you'd be surprised. I think a lot of Asian kids, they worked their asses off to get into the Ivy League, but then they realize after like three or four years out of college, they're like, you know what? This is not making my life happy. Mm. Like I'm not liking this. And at some point around 25, 26, you start to make those decisions based off how happy you are and what you actually want to do. Right. I sort of have this early stage life prestige. Do I want to chase prestige at every stage of adulthood moving yeah. forward? I, I really compare it to a laptop, Andrew, that has a really great microchip. That's great that a laptop has like the fastest processor out, but it still matters what programs you run on it. It still matters the RAM. It still matters the heat sink, Andrew, even the fan. If you got a top Alienware laptop from the future, but it overheats every 30 minutes and needs to reboot the iOS completely, it's a useless laptop. Right, right, right. I know what you're saying. Like, you have a good engine on a car, but if there's no even wheels on the car, literally, you can't move. Right. Or you're, if you're driving that F1 car on the mountain, guess what? That F1 car, even though it's so great and fast, useless. It's about the applicability and a lot of other factors that a lot of people don't consider. Somebody said, uh, you guys have no idea how the world works. There's the Ivy League. Then there's the Ivy League. And that has to do with, if you're a brilliant rural white guy from West Virginia, from an underrepresented state, and you get great grades and you get into Harvard, chances are your life is still going to play out way differently than a Harvard kid from a legacy old money family who's going there to network with other similar kids from other old money legacy families to build networks and get super rich and rule the world. So basically, they're pointing out the difference between the Ivy League and the Ivy right, League. Right, right. There's, even within Ivy Leagues, obviously, there are certain circles and levels within. You get in there, maybe you're a first-generation college student, and you get in there because you're just the first one to ever go to college, and you're super smart. But then you also get in as a legacy kid. That's why the Ivy Leagues, they, they are very important for the legacy kids to go to. But if you're not a legacy kid and you just want to live a good life and you got a lot of drive yourself, you don't have to Do go. you think they're ever looking at them like, oh, that kid studied his way in here. Oh, he's not oh. part of the global Illuminati. Oh, oh. oh, yeah, I'm sure, bro. I'm sure that those like Winklevoss <laughs> twins, they're like looking at like the Asian students that are like, yeah, so your parents are like villagers from China and you made it here. Well, you know, that's not really going to do much for me. Yeah. Maybe you can program my app or something like that. <laughs> um, somebody said, uh, they were arguing a huge threat. Andrew, is it more about smarts, family, wealth, networking, alumni connections, or all of it? I mean, it's e just like anything, David, it's a little bit of everything, right? You're saying is NBA success about body size, skill, athleticism, team schematic fit or durability. Well, guess what? As somebody who knows a lot about the NBA, it's everything. Yeah, and if you're 10 out of 10 on certain things, yes, that can really boost. I think it depends. Like, if your family background happens to be 10 out of 10, like crazy connected and well off, dude, your life is going to be so different than the kid whose parents are not well off, but just is like a super smart Well, they're just trying kid. to get by on being an ultra brainiac. But a lot of people are going to be like, well, uh, 
I want that brainiac to do something for my industry. If he's just a brainiac that likes to do sort of theoretical research, I don't know how much we can use him for, right? There's a lot of things, applicability in the business world. Somebody says, this is why I like the medical world. Nobody cares where you went to school because they only care about your track record and how good you are at being doing this medical job to save somebody's life. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's true, Andrew? Asians tend to go into medicine. They tend to go into tech where I'm sure the school you went to matters, but it doesn't matter as much as private equity or other more more nepotistic, old world, networky fields. Dude, Asians like the meritocracy, man. Now, maybe there comes a time with generation of Asians that stops caring because they more want to play the networking game. Uh, maybe, but for now, I would say Asians heavily into the meritocracy fields. All right, so Andrew, there was a whole competing article that came out that said if you include people who dropped out and people who went to Ivy League institutions for graduate school, actually a tremendous number of Fortune 500 CEOs touch the Ivy Leagues or interface with the Ivy Leagues ah. or at least top 20 schools in some way or another. Basically, everybody who's a CEO, they might not have went to an Ivy League school, but they certainly went to a top 20 school. I mean, I think his point is that it doesn't have to be an Ivy League but it probably should be a very top 30 school. Right. And if you went to a top 30 school for undergraduate, you probably were the top of that fishbowl and leveraged that into an Ivy League graduate school education. All right, David, I want to ask this question rounding out this video. Do you think that if you shared this article with all the Asian parents, let's say you shared this video with a bunch of Asian parents who got kids that are like 18 years, right, years old right now, about to go to college, would it take any pressure off the kid? I would say for some of them, it might take off 10%, but ultimately no, because the Asian parents, they're almost looking at the Ivy League acceptance as an end-all be-all. Like you never hear that many Asian parents, in my opinion, really state what they want their kid to do with their life or how they want to change the world or what companies or uh, technologies they want to invent. I'm not saying none of them do, but a lot of them are just like, yeah, I want to have the best kid. The best kid will go to the best school. Right, right, right. So they're almost looking at it like uh, badges of honor but they're not necessarily taking like the long-term view on it. That's yeah. my biggest thing. I don't like that. I don't, really don't like that, especially in the Chinese community, Asian community, whatever you want to say it. Like where they're like, yeah, my kid is great. He went to Harvard, but yeah. you can meet the kid and he's a piece of ish person. I, I've, I've been through this before in church, by the way, because we went to a Chinese church. There's a lot of kids who are aiming for, you know, elite institutions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess uh, what else are some things that like Asian parents need to focus on, I guess? Like given that a lot of Asian parents are immigrants, what else can they focus on and, and put their kid through to help them ensure that they're going to be successful whether or not they go to an Ivy League. First of all, guys, we did not go to a freaking Ivy League, all right? So I'm not going to tell you it does or oh, doesn't hey, matter. UW did have three CEOs in the top 500, though. <laughs> hey, so we're, well, we're in there. We, well, our school barely got in the top 25 institution. Well, but, um, well, you know, I think it just matters what you want to go into, Andrew. There's a lot more film kids who came out of USC and NYU, but a lot of people were like, hey, how come no corporate CEOs came out of CE, uh, NYU or USC? And someone said, yeah, you don't go to uh, USC or NYU because you want to become a CEO. You go there because your dad's a CEO. Mm. Your parents own like 40 gas stations. Right, right, right. I mean, right. Andrew, the richest guy I've personally met my age I know two of them. The richest guy I went to high school with played in the NBA. The richest person that I've met that was like under 30, that was like a hundred, hundred millionaire was a crypto scammer who went to jail, but it was able to keep a lot of his liquidity. Yeah. So I'm saying neither of those people went to Ivy League school. So are we just talking about money? Or are we talking about the prestige and being able to navigate amongst the Illuminati succession yacht Davos crowd. The education of the rich and famous I mean, with Robin Leach. What do you think, Andrew? Do you think an Ivy League education is overrated, underrated? Is David King right or a lot of, is he wrong? Well, you know, David, I didn't go to the Ivy Leagues. I didn't even get waitlisted. I didn't even apply to an Ivy League and now I'm a YouTuber. So I don't know. I don't know. What do you think, man? I would say that, you know, there certainly has an impact, but ultimately I, the people that I more look up to yeah. are the people, like the richest guy in, uh, our city growing up was an old white guy who just bought up all the land in a neighboring city and that city caught a huge real estate bounce. He became a billionaire. And to be honest, Andrew, he was like kind of a hillbilly. Yeah. Like low I, key, a hillbilly. I think a lot of Asians work their asses off to go to the Ivy League and do what they're told by their parents and then be the good kid. And then around like 26, they start to realize that it wasn't everything that they wanted, you know? And then right. they end up changing their careers or do something that just makes them more happy, which I think is good, but... I think sometimes they had to go push themselves that far just to get that, achieve that anyways in the first place. So anyways, guys, you let us know in the comments down below what you think 
how much does going to an Ivy League matter for what you want to do? Right. Because it absolutely matters what you want to do. If you want to go into banking, yeah, I think going into Ivy League schools does matter. But if you want to be an entrepreneur, if you want to go into tech, different things, engineering, you don't have to go to a top 20 school. Even. We know a via guy who didn't even graduate high school, Andrew's worth like $50 million off real estate. But obviously he's not, you know, at the philanthropic dinners with Bezos or whoever else is like, it doing just all this stuff, yeah. What circles you want to be in. All right, everybody. So please let us know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. We are the Hot Pop Boys. And until next time, we're going to the Ivy Leagues. Peace.